Hey, I'm Cody. Um, I watched the video Recovering from Traumatic Events, um, the healing process. This was a survivor's edition. Um, so there was some survivors of traumatic events that came on and talked about their issues and, and what all happened to them. There was a variety of people that were... Um, held captive as uh, sexual slaves, um, there was war veterans, there was just, you know, first responders that had come up against something that uh, caused them to have a traumatic experience. Um, but um, they really talked a lot about how therapy helped with uh, the traumatic events. Um, they, you know, pinpointed that those traumatic events causes fear and that fear causes them to live in a state of where they're not very social or active in um, the community activities. Um, they also suffer from some insomnia uh, and other sleep disorders. Um, they are constantly living in a state of what if this happens again they're you know they're living in that fear um, of that same exact thing happening um, they experience flashbacks um, which is a symptom of PTSD um, they could have something that happened to them at a uh, some kind of traumatic moment that happened to them and they may not experience flashbacks or any kind of symptoms from PTSD for months, years, decades. It's, it, it really just depends on, on the person. Um, there are three types of symptoms. Uh, the first is re-experiencing. Uh, they, they re-experience the traumatic event in their head over and over again. It's uh, it's it's like a haunting. They're uh, they're haunted by the memories. Um, they feel like they have no control over their mind. So they associate different events and things to what had happened to them. Uh, the second symptom that they talked about was emotional uh, anesthesia. Uh, so pretty much they're numb. They're numb, they don't feel anything, they distance themselves from other people, they're not uh, doing the things that they normally do, the things that they normally enjoy. Um, they uh, find themselves to be distant from the things that they're used to, so it's like they're creating a new norm. Um, the third is nervousness, which is basically anxiety. And, you know, a lot of these symptoms you could just put all together in a diagnosis of anxiety, but along with PTSD. Um, they're very jumpy. Uh, they can't concentrate on things. They're just very... They can't socialize with people because they're so jumpy and jittery and fidgety and, and they're moving around a lot. Um, so they're nervous. It's, it goes back to that whole, um, what if this happens again? Um, someone with, that suffers from PTSD, they, um, they typically take a while to talk about the events that they suffered. So a lot of times when um, they're in a session with a counselor, they, they kind of beat around the bush, I guess I could say. Um, but it takes a while for them to get comfortable to even accept that event. Like, this happened. This happened to me. This is why I'm dealing with what I'm dealing with. It's, it's a process. You know, the whole grieving process. You know, the first process, or the first step being denial. They deny that they're feeling a certain way. Another thing they talked about was desensitizing. Um, it's it's a it's a it's a milestone for them to be able to 
think of the past without becoming upset. Um, a lot of people with PTSD and other anxieties, uh, they think about the past and it just brings back all those memories and they're not able to be comfortable with what had happened. It's like they're not moving on from that, from that point. Um, there's, there's two things that they have a hard time implementing with their recovery process and that's emotional support and positive outcomes. Um, they tend to detach from other people and they don't want to accept that emotional support or, you know, or they don't even want to think that there's going to be a positive outcome for anything. It's just, it's kind of like they're stuck where they are. Um, there was some, uh, interventions and some treatment that they talked about, uh, that really helps them. And, um, they cope through different forms. Uh, there's poetry, there's art, yoga, exercise, uh, journaling. There's so much different things. It's It depends on the person. And it's whatever makes them feel more comfortable. It's, it's, it's their release. Um, like, poetry is one of those things where it's like you let out how you feel and... And it's, a, it's also an art form. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of art forms, sculpting, painting, and uh, all those things are very therapeutic, uh, depending on what their, whatever helps them, whatever is their thing. Um, and a lot of these people see themselves as damaged. They are damaged and they have no help. They're not going to get help and they're not going to get better. Um, so that was pretty much all the notes that I took on this video. Um, but I did learn a lot about uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and anxiety when it comes to uh, traumatic events. So I hope this video helped you guys.